Hey guys, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties today. Um, Shelly is going to be hopping on here as soon as she can get logged in. Her computer is giving her some issues. Um, the program that we used to go live was giving a, her a little trouble and Facebook is giving me a little trouble. So I'm completely relieved that I can actually see myself on the screen and hopefully you can all see me as well. So as you're popping on, please say hi and let us know where you're watching from. If you comment, it actually helps us um, see that you're there and we can also answer questions as we're going. Sometimes she can't see the questions, but I can always tell her that you've asked a question. So that is awesome. Um, and we're gonna be talking about her book that she wrote, Dinner for a Dollar where she took some news about her child that he was ill and needed to follow a special diet and started, oh, there she is. Hold on, let me grab her. Hey. Hey, so sorry, I figured it out and you'll see my teenager in the background who was trying to experiment with lighting with me and- It looks great. Know. There we go. It looks great, good job. So I was just telling everybody um, what we were going to be talking about and um, that you had a child that was diagnosed with an illness and you had to change, like totally re-evaluate all of your foods that you were eating. And I hadn't gotten to the point to where we talked about how costly that seemed to be until you actually sat down and broke it down. So um, how are you? Yeah. Yeah, it was a crazy ride. You know, we were eating pretty healthy for an American family. You know, we weren't on the sad diet before, but, you know, we were definitely consuming wheat, dairy, eggs. Um, and uh, when he was given his list of allergies, I mean, there was like 20 or 25 things on it that we had to eliminate right away. And it was wild. Um, but we dove right in. Um, we saw improvement in his disease almost immediately. Like within three days, we started to see improvement within a week, massive improvement within a few weeks, like life changing improvement. And so we knew that diet was the right choice for his health. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we had decided he was young at the time, maybe five or six, um, we had decided that our whole family would eat the diet that he needed to eat. Right. That way, as a five or six year old, he wasn't seeing mom and dad and sister, you know, eating cinnamon rolls and he couldn't have them. Right. So um, we chose our we chose to change our whole diet uh, for our family. Um, and not only did we eliminate the allergens, but, you know, through my own research, since he had an autoimmune disease, I learned that we also needed to um, reduce uh, processed foods and to increase the amount of produce that we ate because um you know the it was shown that a lot of produce could help reduce inflammation and um processed foods of course created more inflammation so so we didn't just reduce the allergens we also went to a whole food diet and lots and lots of produce and uh, we spent a small fortune and half the day in the kitchen doing it um and anyway, that was our life for years. Yeah. And I think it, it's that way for a lot of people that either they get testing done because they're having some sort of a health issue and they find out that they have a whole bunch of food allergies um, or sensitivities even for that matter. Right. And then because I used to see that in the clinic all the time, people would get their food sensitivity results back and they would be like, but these are all the foods I eat what do I do now? And fortunately, we always provided them with a list of alternative foods that they could eat because people kind of go into shock and they're like, yeah. I, I'm going to starve to death. There's nothing that I can actually eat. What am I going to do? And it's, it's a very emotional thing. Um, people are really emotionally attached to food. And we, we always tell people that when you're eating yeah. foods that your body doesn't recognize as food, it actually causes like an adrenaline response in your body. So sometimes eating those foods that are not good for you because your body doesn't tolerate them can actually create more of a, 
an emotional attachment to those foods because you get that adrenaline response. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So switching your diet can sometimes be really challenging for people because they're, they crave those foods because they crave the reaction that their body has when it's trying to protect itself from those foods. For sure. Well, and there's also the social um, and cultural component, you know, especially for kids, every kid's event, every teen event is uh, food driven, you know, they get together at church and they have pizza night or Chick-fil-A or, um, you know, they go to church on Wednesday nights and they're given, you know, candy and cookies and, um, you know, even at a lot of schools, you know, give food as treats and um, rewards. And um, so I really was, did, was not aware of how much of our culture and society is surrounded around food. Um, the big deal. Yeah, I've found that too. And I've, you know, since I've started to really embrace the fact that there are foods that I cannot eat myself, yeah, I find that I'm always trying to talk my friends and family into doing things that don't revolve around food. Like, yeah. can we go to the park? Can we go see a movie? Can we do something else besides right. going out to dinner as right. a way to celebrate, you know, birthdays or achievements or things like that? Can we do something that doesn't involve food? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a big deal. Um, and it, even as adults, it's a big deal. It's also a big deal on kids. And so yeah, there's definitely an emotional, social uh, component to making those switches. And I, I appreciate that you offered your um, patients list, because whenever anybody comes to me to ask for advice, you know, not not because I wrote dinner for a dollar, but just as a mom of kids with food allergies, you know, I always told people for years, focus on the food you can eat because that list is so much longer than the food you can't eat. Right. Um, and then as I wrote dinner for a dollar and I included a chapter for people specifically with food allergies and sensitivities, and that's my number one tip is focus on the food you can eat. Focus on the food that's naturally free from the sensitivities or allergens that you have. And when you do that, your food will be far more delicious, you know, because let's say, you know, it's really easy to make a delicious allergy-free pork tenderloin with baked sweet potatoes and grilled asparagus. Like that's easy to make that allergy friendly. Um, and way easier than it is to make, you know, a, a lasagna that's free from wheat, dairy, egg, you know, like, yeah, and then it's a lot more creativity, a lot, right? <laughs> right. And it's um, going to be a lot more expensive to make right. a, an, a, a lasagna that's free from all your allergens. And when you eat that, you're still going to miss real lasagna. Because it doesn't taste like real, it doesn't taste like that food memory that you have of lasagna. This is an entirely different dish. This is something else. Right. Um, but the, the, the roasted tenderloin with baked sweet potatoes and grilled asparagus, well, that's delicious all on its own. And so you can create a positive food memory. It's inexpensive. It's not complicated. It doesn't take you all day. You don't have to shop at 37 stores to buy specialty ingredients. Right. Um, and you can create a positive food memory with that because it's delicious on its own. I love that. I had never really considered that as a, as a thing, but a positive food memory. You're, you're so right. Just like a song can take you back to a time, you know, when you were younger or a smell like, Fresh right. bread takes me back to my grandmother's house when I was a child. Right. Um, you know, like, or chocolate chip cookies reminds me of my mom when I was a kid because she made the absolute best Nestle Toll House chocolate chip cookies, which I can no yeah. longer eat. <laughs> right. But so, like, chocolate chip cookie dough and chocolate chip cookies reminds me of being a child. And I have tried many times to recreate yeah. that smell and that text and that not text texture and that flavor right. as an adult, because I miss those warm memories of being a child, but it's impossible. First of all, right. I can't ever do it the way my mom did it because she has like the special love ingredient that she puts in. Um, but the ingredients that I use are 
and have to be different than the ingredients that she used because I just right. can't, I can't do that anymore. So it's, um, I love that you said the, the memory of what it tastes like. And also I haven't eaten like bread, like real bread in, I don't know, eight years probably. Yeah. And every once in a while, somebody will be like, oh, these rolls are so good. Like we'll be at a restaurant or something and they smell like they're delicious yeast rolls. Oh, yeah. And I'll be like, just give me a tiny little bite and I'll take a bite and I'll be like, oh, I don't even right? like that. And it, it doesn't match what I remember thinking, feeling, tasting like those. it's not the same. Right. So I've like broken that emotional tie with that food. Good it's no job. longer that feel good thing for me. Right. And I think that's the biggest challenge people have when they switch to a yeah. more natural diet too. Yeah, it it is a really rough adjustment. And that's why I always share with people to just focus on stuff that's naturally free from it rather than trying to create replications. Um, of idea. course, for major, yeah, for major holidays and birthdays and all of that, we do the, we do the replications. Um, but the, the replications, those aren't healthy for you either. So when you're looking at a whole food produce rich diet, creating a replication of your mom's um, cookie, you know, maybe you could make it clean for you right now, but it isn't going to be healthy. Like that's no. still not a health food. And as long as we recognize that, okay, there's a time and place for special celebrations and we'll, we'll do those recreations. But we really try to limit those to about once or, or twice a month um, because they're all uh, inflammatory products right. and, you know, um, they cause the people in our family who have issues, they, they still irritate our systems. Right. Um, well, so, it takes weeks yeah. for gluten to get out of my system. So yeah, either I decide to eat some gluten because I just like snap and decide I'm going to eat some, which it right. never is as rewarding as I think it's going to be, right. or I'm accidentally uh, exposed to gluten, my face, and you can see this right here, my face is all broke out because uh, we went somewhere to Miami, like three weeks ago. And I ate um, a gyro. And the pita bread that they used was so like doughy and soft yeah. and all of that. And I was just going to eat the meat and the veggies. But for whatever reason, I decided not to. And I'm still suffering. Three weeks later, my face is still broke out. And I always tell people, if that's what your face looks like, imagine what the inside of you actually looks like. And right. so, I mean, I've been gluten-free and I've done a very good job of being gluten-free for probably going on 10 years now, but I still, every once in a while, just yeah. run the train right off the track. And the only way to get it back is to get strict and follow what you're doing yeah. and then, you know, remember how bad it actually got right. <laughs> and pray that you are able to, you know, withstand the temptation the next time it comes along. I have a friend who just said to me, she goes, I think the Latin word for pizza is regret. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed so hard over that. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that I think that might sum that up. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah, I know. But I've done a lot of that over the since we moved to Florida, for whatever reason, our lifestyle changed. And I've done a lot of things that I would not have normally done. So at the moment, I'm back on my pay attention to everything and read the labels, eat real yeah. food. Because if you eat real food, you don't have to read the labels. You because don't. An avocado is an avocado is an avocado. There's no extra ingredients in there. You don't have to worry yeah. about accidentally being exposed to something if you're eating real food that has one ingredient. Yeah. Well, and that's why I always encourage people as much as possible that for me, a healthy diet means a whole food diet. Because mm -hmm. I feel like and, and obviously, we, many of us has sensitivities even to some whole food ingredients. Absolutely. Um, they don't work for us. But when you're eating a whole food diet, first of all, you can tell what you have a sensitivity to because there's not a million ingredients to try to sort through. Um, but I feel like in general, if you stick to a whole food diet, you really can't go too wrong. <laughs> like there's just, there's not many ways that you could just get steer off the cliff. If you just follow that one rule, a whole food diet, that's, 
for me, that just clears it right up. It, it simplifies it down. And then you can tweak it here and there for things that, okay, white potatoes, they bloat me up or they make me, my blood sugar feel weird or, you know, whatever you can make adjustments. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's another thing mentioning that blood sugar, sometimes people that have food sensitivities actually have a blood sugar react, a blood sugar reaction to certain foods. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy how just your body reacts to what you eat in such a different way and not no two people are going to be the same. Right. So tell me, um, tell me about your book. You wrote a book that, yeah. um, is how to feed your family and it's $1 per meal per person. Correct. Yeah. So tell me about that. Yeah. So, well, I never planned on writing a book. Um, I never planned on making a company out of our lifestyle. Um, but we, like I mentioned, were diagnosed with food allergies and a, a significant autoimmune disease. My son was super ill. Um, and we dove all the way in, right, to a whole food, produce rich, allergy free diet. And we never paid attention to cost. Um, and anytime I would see any blogs or books about how to save money on groceries, you know, I'd pick them up, I'd look at them, and they were all like processed foods, you know, coupons and all of that. And so early on, I made the mental decision that you can't eat healthy and save money on your diet. So I didn't even try. I just spent what I spent. Um, and then, you know, fast forward several years and, um, we ran into some financial troubles. My husband had some, we were self-employed and he had some contracts reduced and we had to slash our budget. And, um, I took a look at our budget and saw what I, we were spending on food and I had no idea cause I had not calculated the cost and we were spending like $2,000 a month on food. Right. Um, 1200 a month on eating out and six, I mean, 1200 a month on groceries and 800 a month on eating out for a family of six. And um, so what I did in my own personal life, again, this wasn't in order to write a book. I took a look at all of our habits that were leading us to such an inflated out of control food bill. And um, I was not willing to change the way we ate. Um, I was not going to change the fact that we were eating whole food, produce rich, allergy free. Those were staying. And so I didn't change our diet, but I changed all of our habits around how I plan for food, how I shop for food, how I stored food, how I prepared food, all of that. I changed all of them. Um, hold on. My phone just, I forgot to put my phone on silent. I'm so sorry. Hang on one second uh, because then my notifications chime and distract me. Okay. And um, so I worked for about three months, three to six months to change our whole food system, not what we ate, but how we got there. And um, then I was able to get our food bill. I was able to cut our food bill in half. So mm -hmm. I was then eating um, for $1,000 a month for six people, about two fifty dollars for eating out and seven fifty dollars for groceries. Um, and... We did that for years and I never intended on sharing that with the world. But I had so many people asking me in my private life, how do you do that? Like, there's no way that's not possible. How do you do it? Plus, I continue to get annoyed with the myth out there that you can't eat well if you have a small budget and if you have a busy schedule. Right. And I feel so passionate about having a good diet and so passionate about having a um, being financially healthy. And I really wanted to take that message to the world and say, you can be financially healthy and physically healthy at the same time um, and be busy. So we're busy. We have four kids. Um, we homeschool a couple of them. We've got two businesses. We're busy. I, I'm not spending a million hours a week on food. Um, yeah. Meal so that's how the book cooking and you know, like, yeah. like you mentioned earlier, lasagna, I have a friend who's Italian and she makes lasagna like the real deal for Christmas oh. every year. And it takes her two or three days to make yeah. this lasagna. And right. most people can't even consider that sort of preparation for a meal. Right. 
Yeah. So I, so I spend, yeah, I spend about an hour on the weekend to prepare for the week um, in food prep time. And then um, our midweek meals come in at about 15 minutes. Um, so I really, part of the reason that I developed habits that streamlined my um, time and energy was because if I had complicated food, then and I ran out of time, then I would go get takeout or we would go to out to eat. And then that would just blow up our bill. So for me, I found unless I streamline the time and energy that my food takes, then it isn't going to be sustainable for me to eat like that. And I am all about, you know, my master's is in counseling. And so I'm all about human behavior that can be manageable. Okay, so I don't want to eat perfect because perfection is a terrible goal. It sets me up for failure. And then if I don't hit it, then I'm just going to quit. Um, right. So my goal is to eat well 90% of the time. 90% of the time I eat a whole food, produce rich, allergy free diet. And unless I'm in a health situation where, like you said, you, you realize now you're in, you're probably at 100% right now because you need to be squeaky clean to turn that around. And I've had times in my life where I had to eat 100% perfectly. But as a lifestyle, I try to eat well most of the time and allow for that little bit of margin um, that, I, that my body can tolerate. Um, and then at the same way, I try to find food habits that are sustainable. It, it's not sustainable for me to spend two to three hours a day in the kitchen. Right. That's not sustainable. Maybe occasionally for a special treat, you know, we'll have a special food day and we'll spend, you know, a bunch of time in the kitchen. You know, I made some really special stuff at Thanksgiving that took me a long time, but I'm not doing that on, you know, Wednesday of a school week, you know, when we're doing carpool and homework and business deadlines and, you know, payroll and, you know, like we don't no. So right. our midweek stuff is about 15 minutes. That's great. So, yeah. um, so we're going to be doing um, some more videos inside of our Facebook group, the low carb yeah. lifestyle with Ask Dr. Annette group. And um, you're going to get a little more detailed into how you do some of those things. Tell us what you're planning for January. Okay. So um, I'm going to be honest. I haven't planned January yet. <laughs> I love that. Okay. So I don't know what I'm planning for all of you, but here's what I will tell you. Um, in those teachings, so this right here, this is just an introduction. This is me telling my story in order for you to understand that I get it. I get where you're at. I get that you have real limits on your budget. I get that you have real limits on your time. And I get that you have real goals for your food life. And I am a real mom that understands all of those things. And I made it happen. And I developed a system that I shared with others so that they can make it happen too. So that's all that today is about. Today is for me to share with you. I have hope. I have a plan. I can help you. Okay, so I'm not giving you any real information other than hope. Um, but what I will tell you in January, I'm going to give you real information. <laughs> I'm going to give you some concrete, actionable how to's and how to hit your food goals and your financial goals on a tight schedule. Um, so I'm going to give you concrete, actionable steps. I don't know what they are yet because I haven't worked that out, but they'll right. be good. That's I great. promise you. Well, I've also put, there's a banner. I know you can't see it, but there's a banner scrolling across the screen right now that says yeah. dinner for a dollar dot co, which is where they can go to get your book if they want to get started yeah. right away. And then if you want to grab the book or not grab the book, that's fine. But in January, she's going to give us some little tidbits from the book that might be able to help you kind of wrap your head around the concept. And yeah. um, also, if you go to Shelly's website, you can also sign up for her newsletter and get a chapter of the book for free. That's that right. You can read and implement right away. And I did read the chapter. I went and looked at oh. the chapter and I loved it. It was great. Yes. Can't wait to see the rest of your information. Yeah, so, that chapter. I love that chapter. It's my second favorite chapter in the book. Good. I kept my first favorite chapter a secret, but right. my second favorite chapter is free, available for anyone. And it's all about how to learn to cook without recipes. And 
That is so important because recipes, and I say this in my chapter, recipes can be budget busters very easily. You might see, you know, uh, this is the example I use in the chapter because this happened to me, a flank steak spinach salad with a homemade marinade. Um, that got me one time. I saw that on Pinterest and I went to the store and it cost me $30 to make that flank steak spinach salad. And afterwards I was like, what just happened? I should have right. gone out to eat. <laughs> um, and so I learned how to break free from recipes. And that's what's in that free chapter because most people feel like they got to stick to a recipe in order to create good food. But I walk you through the process of how to create good food that meets your food goals without a recipe. And that will help save you time, money, big time. Because then you can use, you can create meals out of things that you're able to, that are, out of things that are on sale rather than just going to the store and buying XXX ingredients that aren't on sale and then just crushing your food bill. Right. That's great. Well, um, is there anything else that you feel like you should share before we hop off of here? Um, well, let's see. Hmm. Uh, the only thing that I would wrap up with is that if you are feeling frustrated right now in your life with your food goals, um, and really, you know, you, you know, you need to eat differently because you have eczema, your eczema is telling you, you need to eat differently, or your tummy is disrupted, or, um, you know, your skin or your, you know, whatever uh, your joints probably are telling you, stop. Um, right. So I am here to tell you that there is hope that, um, first of all, if you can find a way to listen to your body and make those changes that it's asking you to make, um, you I, I can't guarantee you, but I think you're going to feel better. And if the reasons that you haven't done that so far are time or money, I can help you. I can absolutely help you hit your food goals with a time budget that you have and a financial budget that you have. So I am here to give you hope that you can afford to listen to your body um, and on the schedule that you have right now. Awesome. So do me a favor and just smile for a second. I'm going to take our picture. Okay. There we go. That way I All can right. put it on Facebook. Um, so you don't wonderful. catch me doing this like in the... <laughs> right? Or like one of those like where your eyes are half open. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's really frustrating what you get caught doing on those right? still shots. Right. I know. And like family at Christmas time, you know, family's always snapping pictures when nobody's paying attention. And I'm always either putting food in my mouth or chewing something when somebody takes my picture. So right. I figure I would give you a heads up that I was going to take your picture. So I appreciate thank you that. so much. I'm super excited. And hopefully the fact that I am limited on Facebook to what I'm allowed to do today and tomorrow doesn't interfere with this too much. But if so, I'll just pop it back up on Saturday sure. so that people can watch it once I'm able to comment on things again. But I didn't want to skip it and it's been it's been showing. So hopefully Great. people will see it come across their screen and they can um, join in. So thank you so much. I'm super excited to see what's coming and hopefully you'll get some people sign up for your mailing list and- yeah they'll take advantage of that free chapter of the book that's on your page. So, and I Great. did, I ran that across the screen too. So anybody who's- I can actually see that rolling across the screen. That's a really cool feature. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's cute. That's a new feature. They just added it today. So I was glad that oh. I was able to snag it. So- Well, thank you. Well, thank you and have a great yeah. weekend. It looks like it's trying to come out here. It's been a little bit gloomy today. So hopefully that'll happen. So, but thanks a bunch. All right. Thank Talk you. Later. Bye.